Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, all praises and the balan is due to Yahweh, Bahashem Hamashiach, Ramalak Yahweh Shai. Secondly, this is Brother Ardan, WFI Detroit, coming back at you with yet another cold cut. Uh, today in this cold cut, we'll be going into a little bit of history. Okay. Um, why? Well, as you can see from the title, we'll be going to history that, uh, that pertains to the Japhites. And the most I put in my spirit to gather information here and there a little for the past, well, I want to say, uh, two weeks. So that Israel may know who the Japhites are. And I've seen a lot of videos, street teaching, you know, I've seen a lot of, um, yeah, I'll just say that a lot of videos, street teaching, and a lot of breakdowns. And I rarely ever see Israel go into who are the Japhites. And I find this to be important because, first of all, the Lord said in Sirach, um 5 and 15, Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small. Whether you want to consider this as uh, a great matter or a small matter, then nonetheless, it is still a matter that has to be discussed. Because the Lord said, Be not ignorant. Right. If the knowledge is before you, then you should grab it. Right. Or if you have the opportunity to know knowledge, then you should find it. OK. So we can't always go into Proverbs chapter one. It's not always known. It's not always about knowing the, set, the same seven precepts. You know, you have to get, dig a little deeper into this truth. The Lord set before us so many books and even within those books. There's a lot of history behind it. Okay. So it will behoove you to go into secular history. History that pertains to the Bible. All right. So I'm going to go to Job 15 and uh, 8. Hast thou heard a secret of God and dost thou restrain wisdom to thyself? So as watchmen, it is our job to inform Israel and broadcast the information that we learn and gather through our studies. And hopefully, Abba Ratiza, the Father's will in Hebrew, um, Israel may hear this and add their own too. All right. This is a precept. This is Sarah 21 and 15. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it. And add unto it, but as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeaseth him, and he casteth it behind his back. Right? That's why you can't cast your pearls before swine. They'll trample over it, and next thing you know, it's behind their back. Alright, but a wise man, he will hear it, and he'll commend it, and he'll add even unto. And he might take away, but nonetheless, he's going to add unto, and more information will be produced. As long as that information is you know, somewhat accurate. That's the goal, though. That Israel may be inspired through the um, through uh, all different sorts of videos that are produced and pushed out. Right, Lord will and Abaratzai will spark that flame under you, and, and, and start you know, growing bigger and bigger. That you may yourself want to do research and uh, get more information. Regarding topics that can be um, crucial to the truth. Okay. But without further ado, I'm going to. Um, what do I want to start? All right. So you have the. Um, I'm going to start. Where is this? Oh, here we go. Salakia. Yeah. Um, Javin. All right, I'll start with the Bible. That's the best place to start. This is what should I get? Genesis twenty-one and fifteen. Select like it. Select like it. I'm going off. This is Genesis the tenth chapter. Going into the table of nations. Now, these are the generations of the son of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And 
that's who we're going into touching on today. So I will jump down to verse 2. Next verse. The son of Japheth, uh, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan. And that's an important word that we'll get to um, a little later. As you can see, spoiler alert, to your left. All right. This is Bible up. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Javan and Tubal and Meshach and Tyrus and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz and Ripath and Togmara. And we'll touch on Ashkenaz as well. That's not to be mistaken as the Ashkenazi Jews. Right? Esau, they kind of took over and they went down went under that uh, they took under that alias, that 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 identity as the Ashkenaz. Um, verse 4, the sons of Javan, El Elishash, and Tarshish, and Kitsum. That's an important word as well. We'll run into again. And Dodinim. By these were the owls of the Gentile divided in their lands. Everyone after his own, it's like after his tongue, after their families and their nations. So for those who don't know, the owls is islands. So the Lord is telling us. And the Lord doesn't have to tell us, you know, through a hundred, you know, real detailed, like, okay, these people are going to dwell right here above this, this quarter and the coordinates are this, that, and the third. The Lord doesn't have to do all of that, right? Through the spirit, we understand that these people, these Japhites, they dwell in the islands, playing upon tables. In 2nd Ezra 14 and 2, we bring out quite often, it says, um, I will jump down. This is uh, second entry is 14 and five. And told him many wondrous things and showed him the secret of times and the end times. It's like in the end and commanded him saying, these words shalt thou declare and these words thou shalt hide. All right, this is yeah, uh, referring back to Yahweh Shai uh, speaking to Moses in a burning bush. At the burning bush, bush, and uh, yeah, so I brought that out to say the Lord didn't have to, you know, really go into you know much detail, telling us where exactly and what coordinates and location the uh, Japhites would be. This information suffice that they dwelt on our islands. Okay, and I read earlier Javan. All right, that name still is still echoed throughout history, even unto this very day. And as you can see, well, this is a uh, Bible hub, and I'll provide uh, more information. Uh, Javan, the son of Japheth, Genesis 10, what we just read, Javan was regarded as the representative of the Greek race. The name was probably introduced into Asia the, at the, by the Phoenicians, to whom the Idonians. Were naturally better known than any of, of the Hellenic races. Now, this isn't, you know, when you read, when you see the word Greek, a lot of people think of a uh, white man, old white man. However, you have to understand that the um, first Greeks were people of um, color, dark skinned people. All right. They were very melanated. And although they were melanated, that doesn't mean that they were Israelites. Because even ham is very melanated. But it's important to know that the first Greeks, they were melanated as well. They were, they were Japhites. Esau, the so-called white man that has uh, numerous amounts of identities and uh, many aliases, he took on the Greek. Right now, he's known as the Greek. Right? Even with Ashkenaz, he's known as the Ashkenaz Jew. First of all, and, and that's confusion. He's known as... Hold up, hold up, hold up. First of all, Japheth isn't a Shemite, right? One of the sons of Shemite, uh, uh, Japheth is Ashkenaz, right? Let me go back to it. Verse 3, one of the sons of, uh, ultimately, of uh, uh, Japheth is Ashkenaz, right? So, Ashkenaz is a Japhite. 
And Esau calls himself the Ashkenazi Jew. Ashkenazi Jew. So it's nothing but confusion. How are you an Ashkenazi from, from Japheth, but you're also a Jew from Shem? Nothing adds up in the world of Esau. Everything they do is they just winking it. Anything to do, it's like anything to get away from their um, original biblical nationality, which is Edomites, which is Esau. Okay. Here's another um, source letting you know. Uh, the name Javan is a boy's name of Hebrew origin, meaning Greece. That's to be looked into um, a son of Noah, right? So we keep seeing the word Greece and Greek pop up. This is because those Japhites are the original uh, Greeks. So like, yeah, we brought that out. Here's another one. Another source. The name Javan is usually given to a boy. Um, Javan. Hebrew. So lucky, here we go. This is what I want. As you can see right here, um, Javan is very of Javan. Javan is derived from a Hebrew name Javan. It means Greece or Greeks. Now that that's a little loose. This this is a little loose, but nonetheless. We keep finding out that uh, Javan has some correlation or relationship with, with Greece and Greeks. And it's not by coincidence. It's not by coincidence. I'll tell you that much. All right, let me go to, this is another article that I stumbled upon. It's a little lengthy. We're not going to read it all, but... Um, before we actually dive into this, I want to read or I want to watch a little bit of this video. The Minoans, the first great European civilization. All right. Now, if that wasn't enough proof to let you know that the Japhites were melanated, um, you know, that they're not Edomites, this video um, will will be edifying. On We're the not going to watch Aegean it all. Sea, there is a large island. It was named Crete and was home to one of the most incredible and developed civilizations of the Bronze Age. This civilization almost remained forgotten in history and its discovery was the consequence of major efforts of Arthur Evans. Arthur John Evans was an English archaeologist. He inherited his father's fortune, who was also an archaeologist. He traveled to Greece to study the rubble of the city of Mycenae. In his studies, he found evidence of an unknown civilization at the time, which led him to different places in Greece in search of answers. Finally, Arthur reached the island of Crete, where, guided by stories of the population, found the site of the legendary palace of Knossos, which belonged to King Minos of the legend of the Minotaur. The excavations of the site yielded Salakia, and, and that's what the um the Greeks stole from them. A lot of those, in fact, a lot of those Greek gods that we know today, the post false gods, let me say that plain and bold upon tables, as Israel scarf and be simple, those false gods, those uh, Greek in Greek mythology, um, they have they 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 were polytheist, right? Or polytheistic. Meaning they worship many gods. And one of their gods that they worshiped was Zeus, Hades, um, Athena, Hermes or Mercury, um, Hephaestus. In fact, one's also named in the, or mentioned in the scriptures. Dionysus. I believe he was that their so-called god of, of mirth and wine. That I, that can be found in first Maccabees, so like your second Maccabees. Chapter 6, verse, let me see, that's Bacchus. Bacchus is, I believe, the the, um, the, the, the Greek way or the Greek version of um, Dionysus. 
with the Greek tongue of saying Dionysus, but nonetheless, they're pretty much the same people. In fact, that's that's what we have the internet. Dionysus, also spelled Dionysus, Dionysus, also called Bacchus, on Rome, right? Same, same thing, same people, so called. <laughs> and in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go into procession to Bacchus carrying jewelry. Uh, So Bacchus is more than likely a, um, a, a Japhetic false god. Discoveries that would make Arthur dead the legendary palace east in search of answers. Finally, Arthur reached the island of Crete, where, guided by stories of the population, found the site of the legendary palace of Knossos, which belonged to King Minos of the legend of the Minotaur. The excavations of the site yielded discoveries that would make right if for those who uh who are familiar with slot here i'm going to pause if i um, need to make a point that's that's important for the whole lesson but for those who are familiar with greek mythology there's a story about the minotaur that comes from um this, this i believe he was an actual dude named minos on our island and he kind of hyped up his his story and his life. I believe it was actually man named Minos. Make Arthur dedicate his entire life to his research. Arthur Evans called the people he discovered Minoans. It was named after King Minos, who, according to Greek myth, was the son of Zeus. The Minoan. Yeah, and yeah, them Greeks, man. Them, them later so called Greeks. It's, it's, that's why it's confusion. Those Edomites who adopted and, and took under uh, took Greek as their identity, they kind of went crazy with this mythology. The Japhites did too, but Esau went above and beyond. It went; they took the extra step. Minoans likely arrived in Crete from Anatolia, where Turkey is today. That migration also occurred in the Middle Paleolithic period, in 128,000 BC. However, the Minoans. And there's um something else that I want to bring up real quick. I have a book before me. Um, this is the ancient Hebrew language and alphabet. Understanding the ancient Hebrew language of the of the Bible, based on the ancient Hebrew culture and thought. All right, let me show this for Israel. Those who might want to purchase it, I'll put the um, book title in the description box below. But this is page seven. It says, it reads, the land of Sumerians, Sumerians was known as Sumer, which is Shinar, the Bible, to, uh, Genesis 10. 10. Um, it is believed that the Japhites traveled north the Black and Caspian Seas and are ancestors of the Sumerians. Um where it mentioned it traveled north of the Black and Caspian Sea. Oh, it was right here too, Salaki. I forgot I had it pulled up. Oh, that's the other one. That's that's so we'll get to that in a minute. Where is that at? The Black and Caspian Sea. This is important because Japheth, they didn't only have those small ass islands. They, did, they wasn't only there, but it was also over here. In the Bible, this, this aerial landmass, this is Gog and Magog. Let's bring it out real quick. That can be found in Ezekiel 30th chapter. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, 
the land of Magog, the chief princes of Meshach and Tubal, and, the prophet, and prophesy against him. Okay, these are the sons of Japheth that we read earlier in Genesis, the 10th chapter. All right. And they dwelt over this land area up here. Gog and Magog, that's Russia over here. And like they said in this video. Where Turkey is today, that migration also occurred in the middle Paleolithic was the son of Zeus. The Minoans likely arrived in Crete from Anatolia. Where right, so it's telling you how they traveled. They Of course, everybody started in Israel. They traveled northward up here and then kind of also reached into those islands. Turkey is today. That migration also occurred in the Middle Paleolithic period in 128,000 BC. However, the Minoan culture only started to develop after having mastered agriculture, which occurred around 5000 BC. As the Bronze Age advanced, the Minoans began to develop a culture based on sea trading, using their incredibly advanced ships for the first time. The Minoan vessels were elegant and robust. They could carry food and goods. Thanks to their ability to sail for days at sea, the Minoans began to trade with people from Anatolia, Phoenicia, Greece, Egypt, and Africa. This is also found in the scriptures as well. This is Ezekiel, the 27th chapter. This entire chapter is going into the trade and bartering system and how they made um, financial gain. This is, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. This is Ezekiel 27 and 13. I'll start up a little. This is Ezekiel 27 and 12. Tarshish was the merchant by reason of multitude of all kinds of riches with silver, iron, tin, and lead. They traded in their in thy fairs. Javan, Tubal, and Meshach, they were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market All right during the brass age you know people utilized brass that was a fact For whether um when it came to weapons um you know uh, different costly arrays that was one of the um one of the materials one of the metals that they traded that's what they had but it also mentions they traded the persons of men they traded the Israelites back and forth. We know this to be true because Yahweh did say you should be led into captive unto all nations. Right? Every um every nation had part participated in the hand of uh Slikia. Every nation participated into Israel going to slavery. That's second Maccabees chapter two. Like here, it might be first Maccabees chapter two. First Maccabees chapter two, verse ten. Oh, sorry, uh, nine. Her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity, her infants are slain in the streets, her young men with the sword of the enemy. What nation hath not had part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? Okay. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Twenty-seven and thirteen. Javan, Tubal, and Meshech, they were thy merchants, they traded the purses of men and vessels of brass in thy market. There's another one. Here we go. 27 and 9. Dan also and Javan going to and fro occupied in thy fairest bright iron. Cassius and uh, Calamus were in thy market. 
That's something I can uh, look up another day. Its culture soon began to flourish in many ways. Since the island of Crete offered natural protection, it did not endure invasion. Oh, good eye, Sonequa. Go ahead, girl. Where are you? ...from other peoples for centuries. Around 2000 BC, the biggest source of income for the Binoans was agriculture. They produced olive oil, wines, and ceramic items with beautiful paintings. Minoan art highlighted all the sophistication of those people. Their paintings had a unique style and exhibited a deeply advanced artistic level. The beauty of woman was exalted in several depictions with large, dark, and wavy hair, colorful dresses, and lip and eye makeup. Men were usually depicted and I want to bring out a quick point. in several depictions with large, dark, and wavy hair. That's exactly how those Japhites look. There's no other nation on earth that really still has that long, dark, lengthy hair. No, oh, it's like, yeah. They're really kind of known for that too, to be honest. Not to be carnal, but in all honesty, these uh, Hawaiians so-called they're known for their dark, long, lengthy hair. Israel, we got long hair, but, you know, we always rock them froze and them different styles and things of that like that. And we can get our hair that long if we wanted to, but... These Hawaiians, they kind of known for that. That's, that's their style. That's their thing. That's what they kind of do. You see that even in the movie uh, Moana. The niggas, oh, damn. Them, uh, them heathen, they had that long, lengthy hair. It's a Disney movie. Colorful dresses and lip and eye makeup. And you see, even in their paintings, they their women had dresses. And I'm not giving kudos or, or, or pack on the back, a pat on the back to, to to the heathen, but I'm bringing this information out to let you know that even in the ancient world, in the ancient ancient world, the women wore dresses. And the attire that she's wearing, you never see men wear. So that draws the difference between the man's garment and a woman's garment. Men were usually depicted with dark skin, athletic bodies, and defiant. Dark skin. Dark skin. All right. Keep in mind, the Minoans, the Mycenaeans, they dwelt in those islands. But when we think of Cyprus and Crete and the Peloponnese Islands, we think of white men, right? White Spaniards, even. But even in our paintings and our walls, they're melanated people. The Japhetic people are dark. Esau is not the Japhites, or it's like the white man is in Japheth. Posture. The Minoans also produce gold and silver jewelry, even pieces made of crystal. Although they did not have a war-orientated society, the Minoans used warriors to protect palaces and ships to fight pyroxing of the impulse to make the religion of the Minoans, clay slabs were discovered with unknown writing, a large part of which cannot be translated to It's another thing I want to um, pull up. When you look at the characters of their language, it's similar to that of Hebrew. And if you didn't know, Hebrew is the, um, the original language of all. That's why I, sh I think I should still have it up. It's ancient Hebrew, all right? That's the Tha, that's got the Alap, that's cattle, Bayaf. Gamal, right? This is the uh, the, the Tha, 
This is the Hebrew. It's the um the alphabet. You see the thigh is similar to and I'm you know it's like let me pull it up. I had another uh image of it. I will have to find it again. Damn. I only bring this out to just to prove that the Japhites spoke Hebrew. They all spoke one language. People back then was melanated. Right? Esau wasn't on the scene back then. Right? Kind of doing a two birds with one stone type of deal. I kind of lost it, but that's all right. That's all right. I don't want to wander off into this, but um, oh, you see that it still popped up. Damn, you see that? That's the spirit. I typed in my knowing's language, and Hebrew popped up. See that? This day, to Arthur's surprise and all those involved in the excavations, the Palace of Knossos was much bigger than expected. Knossos Palace has over 700,000 square meters in all of Europe. The then temples. Some parts of the city had a water drainage system, which worked as a sewer. And something surprising was found below the palace, a labyrinth. This labyrinth contained several massive jars used to store grain and wine. Some parts seem to have been used as a dungeon creature. The island of Crete, designs of mazes and the Minotaur were also engraved on their coins, emphasizing the odd legend about this monstrous creature. See this odd legend and it's already proven, you know, from the pictures on the wall and the paintings on the wall, that these Minoans are melanated people. But further than the video, uh, it lets you know that they had these, like he mentioned, these these coins, and got that Minotaur, a damn demon, whatever, in a maze, letting you know that they started that. This is all information lets you know who the Japhites are. They're, they're, they're not white men. Because that's a doctrine as well in Israel. And also that Esau is a thief. He steals everything. Alright. Don't get me wrong. These are my knowings. They was wicked too. They're still here. And they still got to go into slavery. But the point I'm bringing out is. The nature of Esau. It's like the other side of the point I'm bringing out is. The nature of Esau. And he's a kleptomaniac. Right. He goes beyond stealing your personal items. And the things that, own, that you own. He'll go as far as to steal, steal your identity, right? He'll steal your land. He'll steal your name. A regular thief won't do all of that. But Esau is the thief, the, is the chief thief. The island of Crete is in a seismic region. To this day, there are earthquakes and strong sea waves. Hi! So like you. Commander. In the region, 100 BC, the Minoans to other islands one. near Crete. Thucydides tells that King Mino sent his sons to rule these islands. By the middle of 1700 BC, the Minoans. Minoans represented in Egyptian paintings. See that? were already a famous and respected people. Even the kingdoms that arose in Greece, such as Mycenae and Athens, recognized the independence of the Minoans. Crete had become a must-see stop for countless boats coming from many regions. Merchant boats from Egypt were selling their products in Crete. From there, 
Yeah, they did a lot of trading uh, These together. products were taken to Greece and Anatolia. The same happened with products from other regions. In Minoan society, the imbalance between rich and poor that's really much uh that's pretty much it on that video. Um hold on. So I can... or was not Atlantis appeared in a story cultures of the same period. But what women were also portrayed as an important Yeah, that's pretty much it on that video. So I'll close out on that. Um they did a lot of trading um, together. There was another verse. Yeah, so that pretty much um, is pretty much uh, captures everything that, uh, that that video that that part was speaking about of trading, doing trades. The scriptures get a little more uh, detailed, you know. Talks about foot, um, which I believe is North Africa, North Egypt, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, talks about all the you pretty much ham. Japheth doing trade with each other, right? Ishmael in the midst of that thing. Then what Judah kind of did. But is where you get the point. Get the point. Let me bring out this um one of the last bits of information I have. Yeah, that should be pretty much it. Oops. Now, oh, what is this? Here we go. Who are the Minoans? Oh, that's the wrong one. This is it. This article is from, uh, from an individual. It goes by the name Obed Unasa. Um, might be a might be a Jake. Might not be. Um, we're not gonna read this entire article, but there's a few things I wanna point out that lines up with what was brought out today in this video. And I encourage Israel to do your own research. Like the scripture said in, um, what's that? In Sirach 21 and 15, if you hear something, hey, you know, add there unto. Get to the crux of it. All right, here we go. I'm going to start right here. To unravel the mysteries around the origins of Samoa and Polynesia, we must revisit the classic story, the story uh, of Noah and the flood as described in the book of Genesis. We want to examine here is the aftermath of the flood when the ark finally comes to rest on Mount Ararat um, a part of uh, present day Turkey. There is, if you like, the dawning of a new world from Genesis 9, so the sons Ham, Shem, and Japheth. This story can also be found in other Western Eastern cultures where the story of, in particular, right, that's true, Greek, Indian, and Chinese cultures are examples. The origins of the first Polynesian begins here as Noah. So, like the origin, of the first Polynesians began here with Noah's sons. So whoever produces article the Most High put in his spirit 
to kind of um, reveal this information. Of the three sons, Ham's descendants can be traced to the tropical areas of Africa. And that's true, you know, uh, somewhat uh, Indian Mediterranean, right? This part is true. Table of Nations, Ham, which means uh, Ham, a dark black, uh, included Ethiop Egyptians, Ethiopian, Canaanites, Phoenicians, and Hittites. This is true. Bring out a precept. This is First Esdras, chapter eight, verse sixty-seven. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests, and the Levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land, nor the pollutions of the Gentiles, to wit, the Canaanites, Hittites, Pharisites, Jebusites. And Moabites and Egyptians and Edomites, right? The Canaanites, Hittites, for uh, Jebusites, Egyptians, ham, it's ham, ham sandwich. All right, um, pure earth for settlers, it's Mediterranean. The Mediterranean Sea and the location of Crete are of great uh, importance, thus forming the centerpiece of my hypothesis. Crete is the center of the island of a particular region. The isolation of the island Crete is also crucial when comparing this to the Pacific Islands, and in this case, Samoa's central location geographically from other surrounding island group in the Pacific. There's another part. Again, this is a systematic, uh, this is what I'm reading. Um, again, this is a systematic calculation by the Minoans for this uh, selection of the islands of Samoa, a settlement place of the first Polynesians. Centralization is a theme runs prof profusely in ancient Minoan civilization especially with its trading and commerce activities. The model has long been adopted in the modern world. So like, yeah. Kind of saying a whole lot to, to sum it up. We read this already. The Minoans were seafarers and skilled traders who established the first trade routes in this region, often traded to Egypt. Get to the point. Kind of dancing, but like I said, we're not going to read the whole article. All right, this is what I get. Uh, with the settlement of Samoa, the Minoans then began to the process of establishing a whole new. Oh, Slakia, Slakia, bear with me. We're not going to read the whole thing. With the settlement of Samoa, the Minoans then began the process of establishing a whole new culture called Polynesia. After the Greek word, Poly, many, and Nisos islands, the islands of Manua, Man, Manua and Samoa, based on the ancient traditions of Polynesia, is considered to be one of the first, uh, the first settlement of the place of Polynesia. Da, 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 da. Over time, the Samoan Minoans would formulate a new language, oral tradition, and also a political system later developed into Samoan Matai, based around the ideas of monarchism, 
are identical to those of Crete. The Minoans, the masters of the sea, right, would turn the islands of Samoa into the center point of navigational exploration into the wider Pacific Ocean. Samoa would become the hub of, for trading purposes. We kind of write that as well. Um, they would spread their new culture right across the Pacific region, including the distant island of Hawaii. They are reached. They also reached the American continent, but also it's likely will return to its preferred isolation center of Samoa. That's right. They got that island type of um, spirit on them. You know, the article goes on and some more drags, but it's um he makes a lot of points drawing comparisons to to the Samoans and the Minoans. All right, it's about one more piece of information I want to bring out to Israel. What happened to him? All right, Jake might be asking that question. What happened to them? Um, what happened to these people? Let's see. I already have it pulled up. Um, the Greek Iron Age, also referred to as the Greek Dark Ages, is a period of time between the collapse of the Mycenaean civilization around 1100 BC and the beginning of the Greek Archaic, Archaic period of 800 BC. So the beginning of the Greek Archaic period, that's when, um, we are strong belief, that's when Esau kind of came up in the midst of there and um, started conquering those places. They came from, from wherever the hell they came from, more than likely in caves. They went up, started taking um, those different land masses. All right, they took those the Peloponnese Islands. They took Crete, um, Bigeria, um, Cyprus, Italy, Europe, Iberian Peninsula, Spain, you know, all year pretty much. And when they came into these um into their land to start conquering their civilization, they um they adapted a lot of their culture. So Zeus, Hephaestus, all those the deities of the Japhetic people, they were really melanated people. Not that that matters, but the point <laughs> the point is Esau, he's a thief. And also that these um, the Pala um, Slikita, Japhetic people are those Hawaiians. Twelve hundred BC. Slikita. It's around 1100 BC. Um, these are Asian Bronze Age lasts from 33, late 12, 11, 1200 BC, ending abruptly with the near simultaneously collapse of several prominent Bronze Age civilizations. And that includes, as we run over, the Mycenaeans and the um, Minoans. Um, but that pretty much wraps up the lesson of who are the Japhites going into them. Uh, there's a lot of history that can be um that can be searched up, man. Jake, you gotta you gotta dive into this thing. It's probably kind of important. And for those who want to go out there in the highways and byways and teach, 
you know, it's, it's, it's a, when you bring out dates and information, historical, secular uh, history, it further um, proves that you know something. Not to say you're bringing this out just to say you know something, but for the sake of edifying Israel, when you bring out information, even dates, it further um, proves that you did your research and studying. Because in the truth, it's all about growing and researching and studying. But with that, I'm going to bid Israel Shalom and stay strong in the spirit. Read, study, pray fast. Um, Shalom.